שלום. שלום. And welcome. Welcome to the White Rose Family Channel. My name is Simonai, if you're tuning in for the first time. And this is a series entitled In Line, a series of messages that hopefully will spark or contribute towards encouraging you to pursue the will of the Almighty Father even more, to be motivated, to seek to discover what he has planned for you and for his children. This segment of In Line is called Focus and Ready. It is a time when we must learn to discern how to direct our attention and the direction in which the Almighty Father is calling us to. My brothers and sisters, I cannot stress enough, it's time to embrace the expectations that there will be movement during these end times. With movement comes the need to be ready and focused. Some have moved, have begun already. It will be intermittent movement. And we will need to know when to move, with whom, what to take, what resources to look for. So many things. Why is it so important to be focused and ready, my brothers and sisters? Let me direct your attention to Matthew 24th chapter. Many of you might be familiar with it. But it reads, And Yahushua answered and said to them, Take heed that no one leads you astray. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and they shall lead many astray. Not only are people coming saying they are the Messiah, many are coming saying the Messiah told them. Y'all said this. Y'all told me. I'm just saying what he said. Some are reading black and white texts. And they're telling you that's what Yah said. Many coming in my name saying I'm the Messiah shall lead many astray. That's why we need to be focused and ready. He goes on. This, this is you who should be quoted. You shall begin to hear of fighting and reports of fighting. See that you are not troubled, for these have to take place, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation and reign against reign, and there shall be scarcities of food and deadly diseases and earthquakes in places. And all these are the beginning of birth pains. Notice, my brothers and sisters, this is why we need to be focused. Look at what he's describing. Look around. Has it begun? 24, 11 says, and many false prophets shall rise up and lead many astray. You might not think you're being led astray, but many are. Even when it comes to identifying the promised land, my brothers and sisters, there are hundreds, thousands even, who believe it's South Saharan Africa. And they're using their own intellect to come up with these conclusions. And they give you wordy narratives that sound convincing. And they talk about how they know. Some will even imply that they are a prophet or say that people say that they are a prophet using all methods to try to convince you South Saharan Africa is the promised land. My brothers and sisters, make no mistake. We must and will learn where the true promised land is, those who, who will fulfill the final exodus. And be mindful of Genesis. For in Genesis 26 chapter, it tells us, do not go into Egypt. Do not go into the land of bondage. It's a misriam. At least you find a regrettable end. Genesis 26 chapter clearly says, do not go down to misriam. 26.2. Also look in Jeremiah. 44th chapter Jeremiah. It basically says, do not go into Mitzriam. And if you have people guiding you to the continent, quote unquote, they are misleading you and time will prove. 
They will be quiet, put to silence. Some, and some will be the reward for the rebellious. We must learn how to focus in order to identify where we're headed. We must learn how to pray and discern the voice of the Spirit of Yahuwah so that we can obtain the knowledge necessary for making sound decisions. And I speak on this often, Proverbs 1, 7. The fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and discipline. Let these ring, ring in our ears. Let them, these words stir our spirit. And let the fear of Yahuwah cause us to pause and examine what we're hearing and seeing to make sure it is indeed from the Almighty Father. And if not, come away or purge. Proverbs 9.10 says, The fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the set-apart ones is understanding. These dynamics, these attributes are critical my brothers and sisters, don't just glaze over the verse and believe that you understand it fully. And here, I mention this often. Often you will hear me mention it or share Proverbs 4, 19 through 27. And it says, the way of the wrong is like darkness. They do not know what they stumble. My son, listen to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Guard them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. Watch over your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the sources of life. Turn away from you a crooked mouth and a perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look forward. Your eyelids look straight before you. Consider the path of your feet and all your ways are established. Do not turn to the right or the left. Turn your feet away from evil. And he tells us this, my brothers and sisters, because there are those who think it's so simple just to set a rule and say, if you go right, you can't make a mistake. If you go left, you'll always be correct. Chaos, confusion, civil unrest, lawlessness, Economic challenges and so much more are erupting and causing much pain. You may be the one that the Almighty Father will use to deliver that brother, that sister, from the pain they're facing. It may be physically removing them from it. It may be used to lay healing hands on that brother or sister. It may be as much as providing them with information to strengthen their inward man, to bear and withstand the challenges that come in the midst of chaos and confusion. Yashara, oh Yashara, we will discover strength and comfort. Never imagine for becoming more focused and ready. I can't stress this enough. And you probably say, I heard it. I don't need to hear the rest of it. That is your choice. But I believe when water waters a plant, the more water, sometimes the better. Becoming focused and ready will make a huge difference on how we navigate through emerging trying times. I recommend being thirsty and hungry for guidance from Abba Yahuwah. Hunger for his word. Hunger for that everlasting word that comes from the Almighty Father, that word that Yahushua spoke of in John 4th chapter. Hunger for the bread of life, the actions of Mashiach, Yahushua. And we will see the bread of life demonstrated before us through one another, through fellowship. Be, be mindful, my brothers and sisters, the days will come when it will be difficult for some to discover the word of Abba Yehuah. Let me share with you what I mean by that. Come with me to the eighth chapter of Amos. Amos, eighth chapter, my brothers and sisters.
For it reads, See, days are coming, declares the master Yahuwah, that I shall send a hunger in the land, not a hunger for bread, nor a thirst for water, but for hearing the words of Yahuwah. And they shall wander from sea to sea and from the north to the east. They shall diligently search, seeking the word of Yahuwah, but they shall not find it. And that day the beautiful maidens and strong young men shall faint from thirst. Those swearing by the guilt of Shemaron who say, As your mighty one lives, O Dan, and as the way of Bathsheba lives, and they shall fall and never rise again. Yashara, O Yashara. Are we in a season where people are hungry for the word of Yahuwah? And is that hunger for black and white text, print? Or is that hunger for the living word of Yahuwah? Is that hunger for his spirit to rise up and make the scripture alive? You see, my brothers and sisters, we need to beware. Many spend more time looking and disputing the letter, the text versus realizing the need to discern the life in the scriptures. This life is made possible by the spirit of Yahuwah, which comes by his word. And the name he wants us to identify his word is Yahushua. Let us be mindful of John. Yes, John, first chapter, verses one through five. John 1, 1 through 5 says, In the beginning was the Word. It's not talking about the text. And the Word was with the Almighty One, and the Word was the Almighty One. He was in the beginning with the Almighty One. All came to be through him, and without him not even one came to be that came to be. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not enough has not overcome it. And the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Drop down to the 14th verse and it says, and the word became flesh and pitched his tent among us. And we saw his esteem, esteem of an only begotten, of a only brought forth of the father, a father complete in favor and truth. It is important to study, but even more so, it is critical to pursue discerning the spirit of Yahuwah, which comes in Yahushua's name. Consider this. Consider these words and know what they mean. John 14, 25 and 26 say, those, these words, they say, these words have I spoken to you while still with you. But the helper, the set apart spirit, whom the Father shall send in my name. He shall teach you all and remind you of all that I said to you. Many people don't realize he's speaking of himself. For Yahushua is the word of Yahuwah. Could that hunger be rising up now? Studying is important. Make no mistake. We must study to show ourselves approved. We must do our utmost. But keep in mind, though man has tampered with the text in the letter, he cannot tamper and overpower the spirit of the Almighty Father. Let me direct your attention to Hebrews 8.10. Here we see where it says, because this is the covenant that I shall make with the house of Yashorah after those days, said Yahuwah giving my laws in their mind, and I shall write them on their hearts, and I shall be their almighty one, and they shall be my people. You see where we receive, how we receive the word and this instruction? It goes beyond the letter. Come with me to Hebrews 10th chapter, verses 15 through 17. 15 through 17. 10th chapter of Hebrews. It 
15 verse, and the set of our spirit also witnesses to us. For after having said before, this is the covenant that I shall make with them after those days, says you who are given my laws into their hearts, and in their minds I shall write them. And their sins and their lawlessness I shall remember no more. This is due to the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Yahushua, the sacrifice word of Yahuwah. Never forget Ephesians 15, 15 through 21. I speak of it often. It is beneficial and something daily to, re, to be remembered. It says here, Ephesians 5, 15 through 21. See then that you walk exactly not as unwise, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are wicked. So do not be foolish, but understand what the desire of Yahuwah is. Do not be drunk with wine in which is loose behavior, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to each other in psalms and songs of praise and spiritual song, singing and striking the strings in your heart to the Master, giving thanks always for all to the Almighty One, the Father, in the name of our Master, Yahushua Messiah, subjecting yourselves to each other in the fear of the Almighty One. Yasharal, or Yasharal, the fear of Yahuwah brings pause. And when we begin to recognize that it's the fear of Yahuwah that brings pause, we may indeed, in that pause, discover what is right, discover how to be more focused, how to be ready, how to respond on time. The time is now to know how to vet and examine all things by the Spirit of Yahuwah. At least we find ourselves in the wrong places and with the wrong people. Where is our focus? Where is our attention, O Yashara? I cannot stress enough the need to examine all things. I speak of this often. Let it resonate to the point where we realize daily we have an obligation to examine all things. Philippians 1, 9 through 11 says, This I pray that your love might extend more and more in knowledge and in all discernment. When we come together and demonstrate love before those that are in our midst, as our love extends to others, we come in contact Shaul emphasized the need to discern, to examine matters that differ in order to be sincere and not stumbling into the day of Messiah, being filled with the fruit of righteousness through Yahushua Messiah to the esteem and praise of the Almighty One. That, O Yasharal, ask questions. Do not be easily seduced and influenced to hang out with compromising camps, communities, groups or fellowships. Do not get entangled with the things that might just feel good. Ask questions. What does it mean to examine all things? What does it mean to receive the discipline of the Almighty Father? What does it mean to walk filled with the Spirit? What does it mean to subject ourselves one towards another? Could it be that since the spirit of Yahuwah is in you, is in me, when we are walking in obedience, we yield because he may be speaking through you to me or me to you or someone to us? When studying the scriptures, what does it mean by the letter makes alive? Let me give some examples of what I'm talking about. First Peter 4.17 through 19 reads, because it is time for judgment to begin at the house of the Almighty One. And if firstly, from us, what is the end of those who do not obey the good news? So I submit to you, Yashara, judgment beginning at the house of Yahuwah first, that means that he will be speaking to us to bring about reproof and discipline 
to bring about instruction, for us to be as iron sharpening iron. These are like metals, and when they cling together, the sparks that fly are the impurities that are weak and not a part of a sharp blade. Judgment begins at the house of Yahuwah. So many people don't recognize and don't realize that that will bring about some friction in the camp, in the community, in the group. Friction to work to the good. And we must learn to distinguish the difference. When Yahuwah is quoted as saying, in Revelation 3.19, as many as I love, I reprove and discipline, so be ardent and repent. What does that reproof look like? What does discipline look like? Should we not see some conflict within the camp? Conflict working towards the good? Sure, there will be some that just bring plain wicked confusion. That's a different story. But let us be mindful of the spirit of you. Let us be focused and know so that we do not bear false witness against the obedient ones of him. Hebrews 12, 11 say, Indeed, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but grievous. But after it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So what does it mean to face that unpleasantry? in the group and how do we get beyond that how do we focus and move beyond that let us discuss among one another what the fruit of these words resemble and how we yield to reproof by our Yahuwah through whatever method he chooses as he chooses us and work through us one towards another if we are consumed by distractions how then can we be focused and ready for what's to come, my brother, my sister. There will be people gathered. Some have started gathering already. And there will be individuals left behind. Some have been left behind. You see, we will not all be gathered before the physical return of Yahushua at the blink of an eye. It's a process. There will be intermittent movement, smaller groups into larger groups into larger groups to reach that final destination before the physical return of Yusha. And it is my belief, my belief, O oh set apart brothers and sisters, that that final destination will be centered around the true Mount Sinai, the set apart mountain of Yahuwah, currently known as Jabal Our Laws situated in the northeast quadrant of what is now known as Saudi Arabia. In spite of what people will tell you, I believe the Almighty Father has showed me that we will return to the promised land between Euphrates and the great now. And it has been mostly a desert because part of that is a reflection of him allowing the fruit of Yasharal's rebellion the cause them to scatter. He let the land become as a desert. For in Yashara's stubbornness, not wanting to be scattered, he scattered them through famine, pestilence, and disease. He made the landscape mostly desert. But I submit to you, O Yashara, and the gathering from the four corners of the earth, we will witness wells and streams spring up in this area that's mostly desert and arid, we will witness foliage, fruits, and vegetables and grains spring up as we return to the promised land. We will witness that the wealth of the world will be in the food and water that the Almighty Father provides. Did we not see an example of how man had silver and livestock have we not read Genesis 47 chapter where we see that they exhausted their livestock, they ate all the food, they 
They used all the silver to the point where in the 19th verse of the 47th chapter of Genesis, they were willing to give themselves over to slavery. I say to you, O Yasharal, a transformation is coming and all the wealth of the world will ultimately migrate towards the set apart children of Yahuwah because this is where there will be plenty of food and water. For it is written in the scriptures, as I gather my children, says Yahuwah, they will not lack. They will have plenty. And the perception of the world to what is wealthy, what is the riches of the world, will change from gold and silver and possessions to food and water in a safe place. Pray and watch, O Yasharal. There are many examples that the Almighty Father gives us, even when it speaks of the dry bones rising up. Whoever gave thought that there's a correlation that the dry bones were in the desert. And for them to start getting skin and skin you and stuff on it, that means water and food. That means literally and spiritually, the water being the word by the word of Yahuwah, the food being the bread of life of Yahushua, the actions of Yahushua, the functions of set-apartness coming together. So you see Ezekiel's dry bones is talking about rising up to the promised land. You see, there's a lot of connections and correlations to what lies ahead if we can only discern what the spirit of Yahushua is revealing to us, that we can see the consistency and the connectivity in all that he does and all that he do. Let us get focused. Let us be ready. Let us learn how to navigate through these challenges. My brothers and sisters, prepare to witness proof of what will come to be. I cannot stress enough the importance of being focused and ready. I cannot say to you enough. Seek to discern all that is required to improve in our focus. Be ready and respond and act when the Almighty Father call on us. My brother, my sister, my family, thank you. I want to say stay tuned. There is more to come. I pray that you are in good health, that your needs are being met. More than anything, I pray that you're able to discern the voice of the Almighty Father, whose word speaks to us in Yahushua's name. For Yahushua is the word of Yahuwah. No trinity. And we will discover where our instructions originate. We will discover what to do. We will learn how to be more equipped, better focused, and ready. And there will be the unlearned, the undiscerning. And we have an obligation to reach out to those that are least among us, unlearned, undiscerning. Reach out to them as the Almighty Father will guide us. For we can only be as strong as he that is weakest among us. So don't think that we are more than what we are. High, more highly than what we are. Recognize what favor we have found. Recognize what we have received, what we will receive. Recognize the need for the body to come closer together. I encourage you to begin identifying brothers and sisters and start moving closer to one another physically. For as we witness wars and rumors of wars, fightings increase, civil unrest and chaos, as we witness instability in people's lives, we will find there will be a degree of comfort if we draw closer to one another, if we examine and vet 
and identify those that truly are sincere about worshiping and old the Almighty Father. Those who desire to yield to reproof and discipline. Those who understand by getting under the blood of the Lamb can rise up in the spirit of set apartness. We can really begin to recognize what it means to be re renewed day by day. Thank you, Yasharal. Thank you for listening. Pray on these words. I pray that they encourage you, that they motivate you, that they let you know that the Almighty Father is sending words your way, my way, in actions, in things that will fuel our attention to be focused on Him. On that note, that's it for now. Stay tuned. There will be much more to come. Shalom, my brother, my sister, my family. Shalom.